Well, I'm back in Hull for the first time in six months, and uh, it's good to be here. Uh, it's rainy, and uh, I'm initially in Paragon Square. I'm probably going to preach for a short while here and then go to Monument Bridge. Plenty of people around, actually. It's good. And I'm opposite the place with 700 people in it. Father, I pray that you bless this preaching of your word. Father, I pray that the word would go forth with power. I pray, Lord, that it might bring conviction of sin. I pray, Father, that hearts would be turned to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation from sin. I pray you'd have mercy upon this city. I pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit here. I pray that there would be conviction of sin and righteousness and judgment. I pray, Father, that people would become concerned for their own souls, for their own eternity, Lord. <laughs> And I pray that they would learn wisdom, and that wisdom which begins with the fear of God. And I pray, Father, that there would be a turning of the tide here, looking to Jesus Christ, or looking to the Saviour of the world, or, or trusting in the blood of Christ shed upon the cross of Calvary. Father, I ask and pray that you'd be with me now, fill me with your spirit, and use me for your glory. Forgive me for my sins, and cleanse me in Jesus' blood, and I commend myself to you now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, good afternoon. It's my uh, excellent privilege to be here to speak and to preach about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Saviour of the world. <coughs> the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who takes away sin. He is the one who laid down his life and became a sacrifice for sinners, dying in the place of sinners, so that we who are sinners might be saved from our sins, so that we might be delivered from the wrath of God, so that we might stand in the judgment to come and so that we might escape the fires of hell and also so that we might obtain all of the blessings of Almighty God which come from everlasting life which he bestows and gives to those who believe on the Lord Jesus. We have a choice. There is everlasting life and there is everlasting torment. And whichever one we have, the only difference is what we do with Jesus Christ. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that seeketh after God. And only when we know the Lord Jesus Christ are our sins forgiven. And only when we find the Lord Jesus Christ do we have peace with God. And sure and certain hope of heaven, of salvation, of everlasting life that comes by faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Now I am reading I am reading in the book of Revelation I'm reading in the book of Revelation which is the last book in the Bible the Bible is the Word of God and we read this and this is um, concerning the end of the age which is very very near all the signs are in the world that the end of the age is nearer is near at hand Wars and rumours of wars, ferment among the nations, and so on. So Revelation 22 we read, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. What do I think about them? I, I, I don't tend to think about them, but uh, what, uh, could you rephrase the question? I what will God do about the gay people? Okay, well, God, God condemns sin in the Bible. Okay. Why does it say that? Well, it says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In the Old Testament, God has given us his ten commandments. If you break God's commandments, you are a sinner. Yeah, but don't God forgive all? Yeah. God forgives us if we have faith in Jesus Christ. If we don't have so faith in about, Jesus... What happens if we gave heaven? If we don't have faith in Jesus Christ, we can't be saved. Are you gay? No. Okay. What about your sins? I have a problem with 
Okay. If I was dead, okay. but I so believe in Jesus your Christ. sins, your sins remain upon you as long Jesus as you remain unrepentant and don't know Jesus Christ. What was your question? Sorry. Jesus, Jesus in Elbrook. Jesus Christ is real. He's alive today. He died on the cross. He's raised from the dead. He's on the throne of heaven today. All sin is under the wrath of God. All sin. We must repent. Well, you must repent of that and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Father, have mercy on those three young people, Lord, and open their eyes, Lord. So, Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Now God is serious. God is serious about dealing with sin. God is serious about judging sinners on account of their sin. For example, their foul language. There's two lads on motorcycles, electric motorcycles going around here. God is serious about judging sinners for their sin. And you need to repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you might find the salvation that comes from God. So they're wearing um, balaclava masks and riding motorcycles through the city centre. And you can see they're not very sociable youth, those guys. But anyway, Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. And we need to repent of our sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Because without Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. You have a soul. Death is not the end. After death comes judgment. And we must all stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. You must stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. And you cannot stand before God's judgment throne. Jesus Christ is God. And he will cast you into hell for your sin if you do not repent of your sin and turn from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to the saving of your soul. You have a soul and you need to be saved from your sin. So you need to repent and you need to believe on the Lord Jesus. And if you haven't found Jesus Christ, your sins remain upon you. And if Vladimir Putin were to drop a nuclear bomb on Hull today, you would be vaporized in your sins, resurrected in your sins, and cast into hell in your sins. You see, this is a very urgent warning. God is a God who hates lying lips. He's a God who hates drunkenness. He's a God who hates fornication, adultery, every kind of sexual immorality. No, thank you. Every kind of sexual immorality. And he is a God who looks at the heart. Repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Here comes the devil's vacuum cleaner right on cue. Repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you might find the salvation that comes from Almighty God alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. The Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary and laid down his life there, loved sinners, gave himself for sinners, paid the price for sin, so that whosoever believeth on the Lord, he should be saved from his sins. God's way is not by works. God's way is not by religion. You're not saved by religion. You're saved when you come to a living, saving relationship with a living, saving Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Saviour of the world. Turn from your sins, repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you will have the salvation which comes from Almighty God. Then you will find the Saviour of the world. Jesus Christ is alive today, seated on the throne of heaven. And he says, Behold, I come quickly. The Lord Jesus will very soon return on the clouds of heaven. Are you ready for him? Are you ready for the day when as the lightning flashes from the east to the west, 
The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Saviour of the world, returns. And he returns in all of that glory, in all of that majesty, which belongs to God alone. Remember that when he first came into this world... I'll just wait for the ambulance to go past. Remember that when the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world, he died on the cross of Calvary to save sinners. These two motorcyclists are back. He came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. Without Jesus, you are lost. Without Jesus Christ, you are in your sins. Without Jesus Christ, you are on the verge of hell. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. Without Jesus Christ, you will die in your sins. Lying, stealing, swearing, sexual immorality. Sexual immorality of every kind. And wickedness and uncleanness and filth of every kind which God sees, which God knows. He looks at the heart. He knows you through and through. He knows your sins. He knows your thoughts. He knows your desires. He knows your motives. God says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is... That vacuum cleans back. There is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all together become corrupt, every one of them. And oh, my dear friends, if you do not know Jesus Christ, you are dead in your trespasses and sins. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot live. You cannot live without Jesus Christ. You cannot have life apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. And only when a person knows the Lord Jesus Christ, only when they find the Lord Jesus Christ, only when they become a Christian, when they turn from their sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, will they find the salvation that comes from God. Now you think about it. The Lord Jesus has been cancelled. You can come here and have a whole week of pride, a month of pride, but the council won't even allow a single day for the Lord Jesus Christ. His name has been expunged. He has been cancelled, hasn't he? He is a banned book. He is the man that is a man of sorrows, despised and rejected of men. Now why is that? It's because people love their sins. Pride is an abomination to God. But the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. Sinners like you and me. Homosexuality is sin. Lesbianism is sin. Jesus said men love darkness rather than light. And that's why you can come here and you can see rainbow flags for so much of a year. But you come here and you won't find anything about the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who loved sinners and gave himself for sinners. The one who was despised and rejected of men. The one who was acquainted with grief. The one who gave his life, who laid down his life upon that cross of Calvary, who died in the place of sinners, who loved sinners and gave himself for sinners. The one who was laid in a grave for three days and three nights and is raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God. He is not dead, he is risen. And if you find Jesus Christ, you will find that life, that salvation, which comes from Almighty God. He is alive. He is near at hand to those who call upon his name. Now repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from your sin. Cast yourself upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Here come those bikes again. They're also going round and round in circles and... Uh, well, prepare for some more hooting. Now the Lord Jesus, I'll try and get it engagement. The Lord Jesus is that saviour of the world. And the Lord is able to take us in our sins and forgive us and cleanse us in his blood. We all have badness in our hearts. We are all sinful before almighty God. We are all guilty before God. We are all under the wrath of God without Jesus Christ. And every one of us is under the wrath of God until we find Jesus Christ. 
The wicked, the Bible says, shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't come back round again. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. That means without Jesus Christ, God will turn you into hell. He will cast you into the lake of fire. He will judge you in his wrath and deliver you to the everlasting burning fires of hell. The Lord Jesus Christ warned us about hell more than any man. The Lord Jesus Christ warned us about hell more than any man. He warned us in loving mercy. He warned us. He knows. He created hell. He has authority over hell. And he tells us in his word in the Bible that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Have you forgotten God? Is there no fear of God before your eyes? You shall be turned into hell. You see, the Lord Jesus will say to you on the day of judgment, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And hell is a place of eternal fiery torment. You won't like it there. You really won't like being in hell, but there'll be no escape. There'll be no second chances. There will be no getting out of hell. There will be no escaping the wrath and anger of Almighty God against you for your sins, your lies, your swearing, your sexual immoralities, your drunkenness, and so on. God knows every one of us. He looks at the heart. Hell is a place of everlasting, inescapable, terrible, fiery torment. So, so you're on fire, but you never burn up. Not, not in a million years, not in a trillion years, not forever. You won't burn up. You will be in fiery torment forever. That is how hell is described in the Bible. That is why we need Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to save hell-bound sinners from their sins and deliver sinners from the wrath to come and save sinners and give sinners everlasting life because you have a soul. And if you have a soul, you need the salvation that comes from God. Well, you need to repent of your sin and turn from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and God will forgive you and save you. But if you don't repent of your sin, your sin remains upon you. You are lost and damned and ruined in your sins. You will die in your sins and you will be cast into hell. Repent of your sins, your lies, your swearing, your sexual immorality, your cursing, your blasphemies, your idolatries. I can't, I can't blush it. You see, we are all sinners and we have all broken God's laws and we are all guilty. And God holds us accountable. And God has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. You want righteousness, you want justice, you'll get it. But justice demands that God cast you into hell fire for eternity. Now that's why I preach Jesus Christ, because he is not dead, he is risen, he is on the throne of heaven, and he is the saviour of the world. And the only person that can reconcile you to God, and the only person that can deliver you from the wrath to come, and deliver you from the fires of hell, is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And you must find the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent of your sexual immorality, your perversity, your moral corruption, your wickedness. What you said is evil. What you said is corrupt. And you need to repent of that and turn to God through Jesus Christ. Or you will perish in your sins. And you will die in your sins. And if you die in your sins, you will go to hell. A place of everlasting torment. A place of fiery torment. And when you are in hell, there are no second chances. And you cannot escape the fires of hell once you are there. You need to repent of your sins. 
You need to turn from your sins. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because only the Lord Jesus Christ will save you. Now the Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now you believe on the Lord Jesus, God will give you everlasting life. If you do not know Jesus Christ, you are in your sins, and the wrath of God is already against you. Jesus said, whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you are condemned already. If you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there is nothing that you have to do in order to go to hell. God will take you away when he chooses. He will call you away. He will say, come away to judgment. Come away for everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And God will say that. He knows the day of your death. He has appointed it. He knows the day of your judgment. He has appointed it. Now, as I said, if Vladimir Putin were to decide to nuke Hull today, we'd all be taken away in a flash, wouldn't we? Every one of us, he might decide to do that. The war is spreading. The war is spreading to other parts of Europe and other nations, and it's in Israel, and it's in Lebanon, and it's in Russia, and it's in the Ukraine. And this war is spreading. And we shop. Is that where we get our meaning from? Shopping? Is that our life? Shopping? But my dear friends, there is a wrath to come. There is a judgment to come. We need to find the salvation that comes from Almighty God. And if we do not find that salvation, we cannot have everlasting life. Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone is the saviour of the world and he alone will give you everlasting life. Repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall have life to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Father I pray for those who listened. I pray for those two on motorcycles with the horns. Lord I pray that they might have heard enough Lord to bring them under conviction of sin that they might turn from their sins and repent and believe. And those others who listened as well, Lord, and the young people that spoke. But Father, I pray that conviction of sin would fall on this place, that hunger for God would come upon this place, that people would be distraught, would be distressed as they realize what sin is before a holy God, that they would go around crying out, what must I do to be saved? And they'd look for somebody to teach him the paths of righteousness and the way of life. So Father, I commend the time here now to you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I'm going to stop there and hopefully preach a second time at Monument Bridge, God willing. And uh, it's good to be here. It's physically very demanding in this weather to preach. So I um, think that uh, it's not bad for starters, by God's grace. Thank the Lord that I've been able to do that. How hard people's hearts are, how indifferent they are to their own souls.